Thank you for joining us on the Media Connection. Well, we are here where the nation's eyes are focused, here in Ferguson, Missouri. And I'm here with Gerald Peoples, an activist who has a plan. But we want you to listen to what the people are saying about this tragedy and the killing of Michael Brown. Gerald, what brings you out here today? Peace. I want to encourage peace. I believe that justice should be brought for Mike Brown, and I know that there's a large focus on that. But I also believe that we should create a plan for long-term change. What was revealed during this time was a desperate people, and the desperate people need a desperate plan. And the plan that I want to encourage is that everybody have a plan A. The city of Ferguson should uh, make an aggressive campaign to make sure every citizen of Ferguson knows the plan for the revitalization of the city of Ferguson. They should also create opportunities for homeless people, for unemployed people, and for every junior high school and every high school student to be, have a plan A which incorporates them into the city's plan for revitalization. There, it shouldn't, the guesswork is all taken out. The U.S. Department of Labor has created a site called mynextmove.org. All we have to do is use the tools. We haven't been using the tools. The are, are you a, a resident here of? I'm not a, I am a resident of St. Louis. I live in Belleville, Illinois, and this is my city. And, and, and I believe that the plan is designed for any area of this city, not just Ferguson, but every area. Every area should have a plan A, where every student, every junior high school student, high school student, every homeless person, and every unemployed person is, has a plan A to be a vital part of that community. Well, all right. Well, let's hope the leadership listens to you. Now, are you planning to attend the march today? I plan to make sure I get plan A in somebody's hands. All right. Well, you've heard it here, and we'll continue on with more organizers and marchers who are saying justice. So now I'm here with Aaron Guthrie and Sharon Smith, and we want to spread the message that they are putting right out here on posters and on their shirts. Tell us what made you write this poster, because this was my sentiments exactly. I think that if the police are coming in dressed like soldiers, then they start thinking the soldier mentality of people that aren't dressed like them are the enemy. And we are not the enemy. We are here to be protected. And I don't feel that we are. So, and seeing all of this, how do you feel about the police now? Do you feel safe or do you feel like there really needs to be some community relations work? Um, seeing the Missouri Highway Patrolman, the patrol, patrol captain come in has made me feel amazing. He has just done such a great job just bringing everybody together. I am a little wary of the police, to be honest with you. I don't necessarily fully trust them because they, you know, things like this happen. They happen everywhere and I don't always trust that. Mm. Now, have either of you all had any run-ins with the police where you felt uncomfortable? You felt like they were a little bit too military? I haven't lately, thankfully, but there's been times in the past when I have. And what about you? Um, yeah, once in college. Oh, what happened? Um, he just was very intimidating to me. I was, you know, I'm a female, and I, I know I'm, I'm a strong person, but just he needed. He was very intimidating to me for very little reason. I got pulled over on a bicycle, and I didn't have a headlight on my bicycle, and I was. He was very intimidating and angry about it, and I thought that was a little much. <laughs> yeah. So now there are some countries where the police don't carry any arms at all. Do you think we could ever get to that point here in America where the police are unarmed and just serve and protect? I actually used to live in England for a while where the police are not armed except for a very select few and it worked out well. They have less crime than we do, less gun violence than we do. If they can do it, I don't see why we can't. I love that thought and I would love to see that happen. Do you think we could ever get to that point where police are unarmed? I think it would take a lot of cultural change throughout the entire country. I think that's, and it'd take generations for it to happen, but I would love to see a day when it could happen. Well, that sounds like something to work for. So we'll continue with more here in Ferguson, Missouri, fighting for justice for Mike Brown. Now I'm here with Terry Wilson, president of the Jenny School Board, and we've got some children here who are saying that they need some opportunities. What is it that you hope is accomplished by this organizational effort? Well, I hope we really get justice for uh, Mike Brown 
Um, I hope this movement starts something um, new um, because actually it's, it's bringing unity amongst our community and a lot of people, a lot of things are starting to surface. They kind of been underground, but due to this tragic incident, um, you know, it brought a lot of things out that, you know, black people need to start sticking together. The community needs to start sticking together and, uh, you know, really being about positive energy and building up the community and being uh, conscious when it's in terms of elections and things like that. Um, you know, just a, just a multifaceted of things um, that have surfaced throughout this whole uh, issue around our community. How have the children responded to all the news reports? Do you see a change in their attitude and any change in their attitude about police or anything? Well, a lot of people uh, want answers. A lot of people want to, um, they want justice. Um, the, the kids are asking a lot of curious um, questions and things like that. And a lot of the questions that they're asking, um, the adults, we're asking the same thing. You know what I mean? So uh, really just comforting them and, and educating them on, on what's going on and, and letting them know that, that all cops aren't bad cops, um, but you do have some cops that are irresponsible. Uh, and that's, you know, that's just the way it is. It shouldn't be that way, but really educating them to not hate because of, uh, you know, how, how some cops are. Now you've got a lot of leaders that came out today. What do you hope they achieve with all of this show of unity for this city? Well, I hope it just doesn't stay here. Um, I hope they really take it serious and see that we do have a problem that, that they are at the forefront of being able to, to resolve as leaders because uh, people look to them for that leadership. Um, so, you know, really charging, you know, us, because, I mean, I'm a leader as well, uh, to, to, to continue to educate our kids, uh, keep them safe, uh, take pride in our community, and, uh, you know, just, just, just do what we need to do to have a, a, a more harmonious uh, community. Well, thank you so much for your efforts, and we'll look forward to getting justice. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll be right back with more organizers. Thank you. And now I'm here with Debbie Frazen, another protester and also supporter of this effort. Tell us what brought you out here today. Well, this is a, a humanitarian issue, and this is about us all being one, and about spreading love, and it's like, how do we love and support one another? And this is how I see that I can love and support one another, because it all starts with love. Love is the most powerful force out there, and if you've got that to spread, then all the, you know, that's what prevails, and that's where I'm standing. And that's how I can support everyone out here, spreading love. Well, that's great. Now, this tension between the people and the police, how would you like to see that resolved so that there's more trust between people? How to resolve that? Well, I think I've been doing a lot of praying on that because I don't know that anybody has all the answers. But it really starts with accepting responsibility, you know, and, and everybody taking responsibility for their roles. And then once everybody takes responsibility, it's, it's like uh, clearing that space for people to exist and, and for humans to live because it seems that what's happening now is that there, there are portions of humanity that are putting out and like projecting these things like making making certain folks guilty before proven innocent and whatever happened to us every all being innocent until proven guilty and that's that's really where I think it begins so what do you hope uh, is the end result of all of these protests and, and all of the things that have happened over these last several days change change for truth and transparency with love like, let's hear what is the truth What is the truth and transparency of this situation, of many situations in the world. Uh, it's like, let's pick one, start there, and then build on that. Well, I like your philosophy. Thanks so much. Thank you. S surrender to love. We'll be right back with more here in Ferguson. Okay. And now we're here with Sam Johnson, who runs a great program here in this state. Tell us about your program and what you hope these children get out of this effort. Well, we run the program, uh, Keep It 200 is our network. We also run the program uh, at Calvary Baptist Church for uh, kids and teens, free lunch. We give free lunch out to all the kids and our, really through our whole city. We educate them, uh, we deal with them on entertainment, technology, you know, build them up. You know, take the negative up out of them and put the positive in them. How have they responded to a lot of the reports and so forth and the intensity of this struggle? How have you seen their perhaps attitudes change or their awareness even increase? Well, I was actually down here on Thursday uh, involved with a lot of things. And we had our last day on Friday and I came back and I told them on how it was like all youth. 
who was the ones who was keeping the energy going, you know, keeping the crowd going, keeping the whole movement going. I said it was kids out there, they age, just like them, that was keeping it going. And as they figured out what was going on more with the, what went on with the, uh, with the young man, Mike Brown, you know, they, they really had a, a, a insight on what was going on. They had an interest of what was going on. So, you know, it was very educational for them to really see that, you know, somebody even your age, you know, this could be you, you know, tomorrow this could be you. So what do you hope they get out of all of this and seeing the community come together around justice for Mike Brown? What I want them to get up out of is I want them to see the atmosphere of uh, African Americans coming together. You know, we uh, first and foremost, we need unity amongst our people. If we can get unity first, we can really make a strive, a change in things. And it's going to be the kids that's going to make that unity. So I wanted them to see first, uh, firsthand, you know, how kids are coming together, teens are coming together in unity all across the world to change things. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we're here in Ferguson, Missouri at the Greater Grace Church talking to organizers and the youth about justice and unity. We'll be right back. And now we're here with Jelani Brown from St. Louis, Missouri, who is one of the protesters here. And of course, our own Chicago Zakia Muhammad came down here to show solidarity representing the Chicago people. And we want to hear what it is you hope you get out of this march today and coming down here with all these people. Well, I really don't expect to get anything out of this march today. Um, what my hope is, is, is that all of this momentum from this incident will carry over, you know, into the future um whether god gets indicted or you know what i'm saying gets a serious charge or not i just hope that all of this you know unity and solidarity between us black people old and young and you know few you know white folks and other races too i just hope it continues you know because the only way that we're going to solve this problem you know what i'm saying this is not an isolated incident it's going to happen again it's, it already has happened again you know out in la with the guy uh Ezel, you know so the only way we're going to stop this problem is if we, uni we continue to unify, continue to organize. You know what I'm saying? We have to do it from within. We have to save ourselves. We can't, when we protest, and all we're doing is asking, you know what I'm saying, somebody to come from outside and come to, you know what I'm saying, to remedy our situation, rem remedy our, our issues. You know, but it starts with us. You know, we got to start voting. We got to organize around our community. We have to find people from within Ferguson, you know, and within our black communities to run for local, you know what I'm saying, government, to run for mayor, to run for um, city council, to run for the school board. And we have to continue to support those people and vote those folks in. But we have to cultivate them, you know what I'm saying, ourselves from within the community. You know what I'm saying? And we got to save ourselves. And I think those are the steps we need to take. But, uh, you know, so I think the organization is good. Like I said, I'm glad to see all of the unity between everybody. But this is not the end all. This is not going to, you know what I'm saying? We have to go much further. And you have to have multiple fronts. So it's good to get the attention out there, you know what I'm saying? We, it's protesting is necessary. But we got we to gotta take it further. This can't be it. You know? All right. Well, I think you're doing a great job. So, now, Zakia, you've been out here in the midst of this. What are your reflections as you see all of these people unified for this cause? Look, I feel so good. The energy out here is so powerful among these people. So many young people out here. And just the showing up of the people out here is, is going to put something on the law uh, officer's minds and the legislature's mind when they see people out here in big numbers like this this speaking from experience whenever there's a crowd of people who don't let up who are consistent every day on the case you get justice i bear witness to that and justice is going to come to michael brown i feel it in my bones because the people are not going to let up people like me coming from chicago and other cities and states they are out here standing with Ferguson saying, hey, we feel you because what goes on here 
goes on in Chicago and it's been going on for a very, very long time. I've been in the struggle and we've been fighting against this kind of injustice for the longest. So now young people are beginning to see what we fought when we were young, you see. So I'm very happy to be a part of this group out here as far as I can see people all over and they want justice. I just found out there's a peace rally Saturday at 12 o'clock in a park. I forgot the name of the park. But they're going to be doing it here, look like every day. I'm feeling good about it. I love fighting against injustice. The Holy Quran says speak out firmly against injustices because it's pleasing to Allah. All right. Well, you're doing your part, and we thank you for representing Chicago. You're welcome. And we'll be back with some more marchers saying justice for Mike Brown. We're back. I'm here at the Greater Grace Church here in Ferguson, Missouri, and we've talked to some of those who are out here showing solidarity for the family of Michael Brown, the slain teen who now is being mysteriously accused of being a suspect in a robbery. Well, many of the residents don't believe that story. What they believe is that there needs to be more honesty and truth and transparency between the citizens and those who are supposed to uphold the law. So now we're going to join more marchers as they travel along a route and continue to express the idea that the police should not be a military force and those who have done wrong need to be held accountable. We'll be right back with more here in Ferguson, Missouri. And now I'm here with Dorothy Allen, and she's got the now famous saying, hands up, don't shoot, buttons. Now, when we heard that the victim had his hands up and was shot, what was your response? What was your feeling about that, realizing that he had been shot that way? Oh, I was just really just hurt, hurt, you know, because the same thing happened to my son in the same department, Ferguson. This is my son here. Oh my. He was stopped by the police, traffic stop. And when he got up and he put his hands up, they let the dogs out on him. So he was bitten multiple times. I mean, and then after they handcuffed him, they threw him down on the ground, they kicked him, they beat him, and everything. Do you have the names of the officers that were involved? No, my lawyer's in the process of getting that information. Now that is amazing. So your son survived, but these are the injuries that he sustained. Can we get a shot of this on the shirt? Yes, thank God my son is alive. Now your son, what, uh, how old is he and what is he doing now? He's 27 now, and he's a barber. Mm. Yeah, that's why. He's 28, okay. All right. <laughs> so now these are grandchildren. Are these his children or another child's children? No, this is my daughter, two kids. Okay. So now, what do you hope they get out of seeing this rally, seeing this protest, and, and seeing your efforts? What do you hope insti is instilled in them? Justice. For everyone that has been a victim of the police officers, it's time that it's stopped because they're killing our kids. It's time for a change. It's time for justice. And what do you hope comes, what do you hope comes out of this rally and all these people today? I'm hoping that the officer get convicted of murder because that's exactly what it was. It was an execution. And it wasn't called for to shoot him that many times. It's sad, and my heart and my prayers go out to the family, and I just wish they get justice. Well, I thank you for being one that stands up, and I'll keep your son in, in my prayers, because I want you to get justice as well. Thank you. 
And I'm Naim Latif with the Media Connection. We'll be right back after this in just a moment. I'm here with Committeeman Anthony Bell right after this rally at the church. Tell us what do you hope is going to be achieved after all these gatherings and all the speeches? Well, we're going to move forward however, however the circumstances go. But right now, we have the Justice, and Justice Department here that's involved in this case. And we're looking for justice. That's what we're looking for. And I gather that from the congressman's point of view, that we will achieve justice more so from the, uh, from the uh, uh, State Department other than local officials here. Do you think that justice will require some new legislation being enacted? Let's hope it is some new leg legislation that would be enacted in reference to cases, high profile cases like this and ones that are not here. What would you suggest in terms of legislation that could perhaps prevent this kind of an event in the future? Racial profiling is prevalent all over the country. Things such as that also help in cases where you know, a person has misjustly been judged by police or profiled by police or executed by police themselves on the street. So do you think there needs to be stiffer penalties for law enforcement officers that do that sort of thing? Or how do we go about making that a piece of legislation that's enforceable? Well making that a piece of legislation is enforceable, we need to, you know, local officials and, and national officials should come together and draw up bills and stuff in reference to new legislation for police control, uh, police uh, internal affairs control such as that. Now the area that you represent, describe that, is it predominantly African American? What are, what are the demographics of the area you represent? Well, the, the area basically I represent is about 90 percent African American. Have you had a lot of incidences in your area of police misconduct or, or accused misconduct? Yes, we have. I have had quite a few in my area. Say, for instance, a, a, a lady named Miss Rachel, Rachel, her son was shot, I guess, about 20 times by the police officer. And we had another case here in the city of St. Louis where a young man was shot 20 times by the police officer. So this is, not a, this is, this is just one a typical case of what goes on here. It's not justifiable either. So what has been the response when these, when these things happen? What, what does the city do? What does the police department do? What happens? Right now we got a couple of cases in court in reference to the cases I just spoke to you about that's in court, prolong, being prolonged in courts right now. But it haven't attracted the, the attention that this particular case with Michael Brown have. We have gathered right now worldwide attention on the Michael Brown case. This case here would represent the cases that went unjustifiable by the police officers. So what do you think it was about this case that made this the one that just kicked everything off? Well, I think what's going happen here, being close contact with the family and being there when the young man's body was still laying in the street, I think what this is going to do is really send a message to the world that we're not going to take it anymore. We have drawn the line as far as racial profiling, police's injustice, dealing justice on the street by police and assassination by police. Well, we certainly thank you for the work you're doing, and we're looking forward to some changes after this event. Yes, ma'am. You're quite welcome. And I'm Naima Latif, here in Ferguson, Missouri, for the case of Michael Brown. And now I'm here with Yvette Harris, who is founder of MASK. Can you tell us the event that caused you to come up with this organization? Uh, the event that caused me to come up with this organization was about my son. My son, he was senselessly killed um, back in 2001. Uh, my son was a 17-year-old who had went away to school to do his last year down in Des Moines North High down there. And uh, he came here one weekend. He had just got a four-year scholarship. And he came down here one weekend to visit me. And um, he had went by to see a friend. And uh, my son got killed. Um, he, it was, it was, it was a senseless killing. Um, it was a young man asked him for a ride home to that he went to school here with him prior, uh, Gateway High School. Um, 
he had went to school with him here and um, the detectives and everybody knew my son and they said that and he was up there talking to them and he was on his way out the door and the guy came up and asked him for a ride home and my son said come on man I'll take you home uh, I'm going right that way and uh, um, the guy had got into him with some gang members and uh, the gang members seen the guy get in my son's car and so they boxed my son in on the highway and and they sh they started shooting and my son was the one who, who took the bullet to the head so. I know this has got to be devastating so what kinds of things do you do in raising awareness about senseless killings? Well, MASS is a, pro, is a non-profit organization. Um, it is to help other mothers who are dealing with a senseless killing in their, um, in their home. Um, it's other mothers who are dealing with uh, tragedies for as um, cancer. My sister died of ovarian cancer. She um, had walked to the store one day and couldn't breathe and she died within a week and a half. And she was a person who would go to the doctor all the time and she had a uh, fourth stage ovarian cancer. Um, a friend of mine uh, whose son um, I just recently heard, uh, he she was three months and uh, she he she left her her son with his dad and and he and the baby was three months and the dad hit him in the head with a hard object and he passed away so it, I mean it's, it's just a lot of different things for us people is killed it's, it's a friend of mine I know here whose son hung himself at the age of 14 and um, the friend of mine who helped me with this organization um, actually evangelist Donna Scott she helped me with this organization and her nephew had just got killed um, the funeral is Tuesday well I am so glad that you're doing this work it's it's a it's a tragic thing that happens but of course we have to raise awareness now these your two helpers are, are they yes. members of your family uh, no they're not members of the family but they're members of the family in church okay <laughs> it's a church uh -huh. so. well is that it <laughs> so one last thing, what do you hope comes out of this effort today with all of the people that are gathering um, for the, the case of Michael Brown and, and striving for justice? Um, I just want all the mothers to know they're not by themselves. Uh, this was a tragic, this was a tragic, tragic thing. And um, I'm, I'm here for the mother to let her know that it is other mothers who are out here just like she is and we, we want to be able to hug each other and cry together and, and mourn the loss of our children together because it is other mothers who are dealing with that and uh, I mean you know I don't mean to get emotional but it is other mothers who are dealing with that and sometimes you know I hear mothers saying that they don't have anywhere to go but I am here in the Lord's name also to just letting them know that we can come together in prayer we can come together in the name of Jesus we can come together and go on trips together it's, it's conventions and it's, it's just a lot of different places that we can go together and heal because we need some healing here in this city and yes. this city needs some healing and we might not have it in in other places but we as mothers we need to come together and just uh let it out with each other that who are that we are just going through the same thing and that's well, what I want. well thank you for what you do and helping us heal and changing the hearts so that we can stop the census killing and i'm naima latif with the media connection we'll see you next time